basically, it was just, it was just the simplicity of it. I.e., is it, is it, is it simple, or is it some yeah. sort of underlying bit of information you want? Simple. No. It's simple. <laughs> so it's straightforward. It is a deep idea in that it's looking forward to a important construction in group theory we'll be seeing later. It's called direct product. It's a way you take two simple small groups and glue them together. Is that, produce... is that common derived isomorphism? I mean, it's it's a related concept to to isomorphism. Was, but but it's googling for an hour. And yeah, I mean, it's... so many different things so, about bits. So particular. it's 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 a way of taking two existing groups mm -hmm. and gluing them together in a certain way mm -hmm. to produce a compound group. Yes. Yeah. Right, and this is just one particular simple instance of it. Compact group, or something like that. yeah. Compact. <laughs> so it's okay. It's it's a familiar idea. You you're, you're forming ordered pairs of elements. Right. Yeah. So this new group called G. G. Yeah. You think of the elements as ordered pairs. Okay. So they're not kind of. Singular, the, the yeah, 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 else. yeah, because they're made out of other things. Yeah. Right? So each element in G is an ordered pair, just like each point in the plane can be thought of as an ordered pair of coordinates. Oh, oh, X, Y, Z, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. But now this is a bit, so the, the ordered pairs come from the fact that, sorry, that you're forming a Cartesian product of sets. So that is just the set of ordered pairs. Mm -hmm. So this is the set of all things that look like bracket A, M. Where the first element a is something from the non-zero reals, mm -hmm. and the second element m is something from the integers. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's so we've got a set of elements. Mm -hmm. That's the beginnings of a group. The next thing you need, if you want to form a group, is you have to define an operation with the required oh, wow. properties. Yeah. So the little circle representing this new operation. Now, before you see it, it's it's extremely natural. And if I held a gun to your head and asked you to construct an operation between these two, it really would be the, it's the obvious way mm. to, to do something. Because if you've got an ordered pair and another ordered pair, the A and B have come from the same place. Yeah. And there's already an existing operation in R star for combining A and B. Yeah. The M and the N have come from the same place, the integers. And there's a pre-existing operation, because that's a group, group under addition. That's it. Well, when in, in Judson's convention, if he just talks about the group Z, he means Z under addition. Yeah. So there's a pre existing operation there. So the most natural thing to do is just to reuse those operations. So the, the product of AM for BN is defined to be, so this isn't something, you know, this isn't a result that you discover or something, it's just a definition of this new operation. We just do the operation with the first elements, we do the operation with the second elements, and that's a new order pair. Whereby, do the operation, we mean the pre-existing operation, which is where those elements have come from. So you multiply A and B, because that's the operation in R star, mm -hmm. and you add M and N, so that's the natural group operation. Well, and sometimes it's the only thing you can do with that. Yeah, because you shouldn't say that doesn't have anything else in the book. You know, you, you know that Z are the integers, but Z as a group mm. only has the number of tangent plus and the minus and the zero. So there's nothing else you can do with you know, it. When you're thinking of the group of integers, or the tenant group of integers, it cannot do anything else than that. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, so there's nothing you can, nothing else you can take about the integers that you're allowed to take from the integers when you're, when you're talking about the product of the group. And same with the multiplication of the reals. There's nothing else that the reals can do than multiply when you've written them just as a group. Okay. So, so what you have to do really is multiply reals and add integers because there's nothing else you can do. Nothing else you're allowed to do with them. And most definitely you're not allowed to mix them. No. Because in so general that wouldn't work. Yeah. They're sort of living side by side and you can see that. The A's and B is the end the end. Yeah. And while there is a natural way, well, you might think, like, we know of ways to start combining non-zero reals with integers. We have arithmetic operations. We could multiply them, mix them up. But for a general construction where we're going to be able to take any old group and any old other group and glue them together like this, 
well, you wouldn't expect it to be a, a natural way to combine elements from this group with this entirely different separate group from a whole different mathematical area. They're, they're, you shouldn't expect there to be a way to combine those elements. Right. So that's why the elements are kept, you know, the different positions in the ordered pair are kept away from each other. They're kept separate and they only interact with corresponding elements. Yeah. So if one of them was non-singular two by two matrices, okay, the group, and the other group is all the symmetries of the of the three-dimensional wall, you can still do a direct product, but then you think that the object has become you know, rotations of the ball and a matrix and a two by two matrix. How do you how do you yeah. how would you combine them? There's no natural. Just keep them yeah. naturally separate. There's no natural One setting in which they both fit. Left coordinate, the other group works in it. Right coordinate, and that's the direct product. So, so, and, so in terms of what the exercise is asking you to do, mm -hmm. is those four properties of a group, four character, the four conditions required to be called a group, namely that the set is closed under the operation, there exists an identity element, it's associative, and there exist inverses. That's what you have to prove about this new operation. Right. So meaning that AB exists within its group R star, and N plus N exists within its group Z. Yeah. Under those terms, the three sort of laws, yeah. essentially the associativity, identity. Yeah. So you use the you use those properties as they pertain to R star and as they pertain to Z. Mm -hmm. You use those facts that they are groups to prove that this new set G is a group under this new operation. So, so for instance, which, what's the identity element in group? The e? E? That's, that's how we would refer to it. Oh, really? what, what, what specific element in G is the identity? Now, G is a set of ordered pairs, so which ordered pair is the identity? Yeah, of course. What is the identity? Yeah. But then you have to prove that it actually is uh, the identity. So, so I'd like to submit it. Well, you can still be submitted. Yeah, they have to submit it. Yeah, we can still be Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, I don't know if you're able to follow it if I just say. So, you prove that any AM. Uh, circle one zero. Okay, what do you get? Well, you get a times one, which is a, and you get m plus zero, which is m. So you get a m. So we prove that a m circled with one zero gives you a m, which is the defining property of the identity. You should also do it the other way around, but they're both commutative, right, so true. you don't have to put. Uh, yeah. Does that make sense now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to prove that this circle thing satisfies all the group axioms by using the properties of these two groups. This is. This you is just saw through with the same times in the middle. Because obviously I was reading through your book. Where does it say times? Like R star times Z. Ah, well, yeah, but that's, okay, but that's the Cartesian product. So. Yeah, not the multiplication of numbers. Can we not just simply put Cartesian <laughs> in between them? <laughs> so, there's so many operations, we have a, too many symbols if we require an absolutely distinct symbol. For you. Uh, so, whenever you see set cross another set, it means. Well, it probably means Cartesian cross. Right. I don't know who uses cross for the product of numbers. It's just like primary school notation. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you won't see that normally. Yeah. Not all of us could have thought primary school yeah. down. <laughs> um, because it was just in your book when I was reading the G cross G tends to G. I read that as G times G uh, goes to G. I was like, no, no. So, that's, so G cross G tends to G, that's describing a mapping right. from the set of ordered pairs, G, Cartesian part of G, yeah. and that the map, that's the domain of the mapping. Goes back to and, its own. and the co-domain where the values of the mapping are are back in the set G. Because that's what the binary operation takes paired developments, one from G and one from G, combines them together, 
to, to prove that they exist in G. To give another element of G. So well, G, G, G cross G arrow G is saying that the binary operation of a mapping from G to G, G Cartesian cross G to G, or the pairs mm -hmm. from L to G to G. Right. In other words, it takes two elements from G and gives you another one, which is what the what multiplication does. It takes two real numbers mm -hmm. and gives you a real number. This is what matrix multiplication does. It's two matrices, it gives you a matrix. But with matrices, matrices there's other elements involved where like, let's say matrix A and B are times, it's not the same as B times A. Exactly. Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. I mean, it may not particularly look like for one, zero, 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 yeah. and for zero, zero, one. Yeah. And others. Yeah, yeah. Many yeah. yeah. others. But in general. Yeah. Uh, Identity, one of these 
this bit here, I was trying to attempt to Yeah, I just, I just, I just can't for a reason, but it's just like, I feel like I'm trying to make that with this one. Okay, but what you do, what you do know about the H is you know the capital H is a And it's, it's the fact that the capital H is a subject. That's um, what's going to be a conjugate type that also be a subject. Because you could do this conjugate operation on any of the subsets. And I don't which you are not. And being post multiplied every element in it by the subject. And they could throw a rather long way to go. Each of the subgroup properties come from the fact that all the satisfaction preserves that. But then always do that. So you always be working on the subgroup list, the fact that each of the programs in order to argue that the You have to be able to show that it's the same as G inverse HD. Right. Yeah, so which of these which of these ones is equal to uh, G and G? <coughs> the choice you've got here, the element G is fixed. Mm -hmm. The choice you've got is your choice of element. I said, which, which element from H might be associated with the identity in the conjugate? What's the answer? Which element might be associated with the identity? Which element from H? Oh. What's that? Take it. Uh, no. Is there a special element? What I mean by that, I'm hoping that you're <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make you say that there's a very natural thing. That it, 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 it's the identity of the H. Capital H. The capital H is a It has got the identity of the H. Yeah. And, you know, it's entirely natural to think that when you make little h be the identity, that should generate the identity. It's kind of strange if there was some other reference that became associated with generating that There's a lot of natural kind of association. What happens when you replace the other H with Well, then obviously um, G, E, G inverse would then just turn to G, G inverse, which would then just turn to E. But how do you prove that H turns into E? That's that's where I'm struggling there. <laughs> when you say it yourself, when when H is the identity, when little H is the identity, mm. if it is, because the identity is yeah, present in yeah. H. I, I got the bit of the thing that I think it's true to put in that natural aspiration to be around and say that H is E. Yeah, it's E and E and then we'll talk about it. Ah, yeah, that's all. Cool. So when, so, Case for little h is e, that is one of the examples of the triple product that we were going to discuss. Mm -hmm. And what does the triple product look like when you respect to the set yourself with the minimum in the middle that means g cancels into g, 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 The only identity floating around here. Which exists in H, which also exists in G. Yeah. Okay, so that's the identity. <laughs> so that means the identity only is like And the reason it is, is because the identity is The closure of the conjugate is going to come about because of the closure of H. Finite amount of elements, which also exists in 
Maybe infinite, but it could be infinite. Yeah, they contain some subset of the elements of G, and, and importantly, capital H is closed. Mm -hmm. So it's closed. And it's the fact that capital H is closed that will, when you see how the elements are worked out, that will make closure also true of the conflict. Right. Right. And similarly for the inverse. Sorry about the, the, yeah. So the gun to the head talk is, is that <laughs> a lot of the time when you're <laughs> no, when you're stuck and you're looking for the breakthrough in a lot of these kind of problems, always, always try and remember to simplify things as, as much as possible. And very often, the correct answer, the correct route, is kind of the, the most natural. Mm. So which of these little elements, little h, is going to generate the identity? It kind of has to be the identity, you know? Um, what was the identity in that uh, direct product? Which ordered pair was the identity? Well, it was the ordered pair of the identity from the first group and the identity from the second group. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of strange if any other combination turned out to be the identity. Yeah. 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 So it's quite a naturalness. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, but, but try and have your, you know, try and, yeah, yeah, and try and notice other places where it's kind of the natural answer is the right answer, so to speak. Um, completely off topic, who do I talk to or email about um, exceptional factors? So, well, there's a, you can get the except, well, you can talk your tutor. And then me, that's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you can talk. Still only a budget. I do. Um, <laughs> one o'clock. Is there a keyboard yeah. shortcut for running programs, or do you have shift enter? Shift enter. Okay. Shift enter. Yeah. We can just yes, like ten minutes that off. Like, enter with this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Regularly. Yeah. 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 I will do this Tuesday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. It's early. Yeah. No, 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 it's not. I think it's not. I think it's It's extremely necessary. I think I'm going to have to do it. I work on that, I'll do it. And I have to. Yeah, that's a boy from Oklahoma. I need some of them. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So this one is different to my heart. I think it's got a different nature. Maybe you might. Yeah. This might sit better with you. What do you think? I just copied that from my heart. Take them out. Yeah, well, it'll be just before eight o'clock. Okay, so nine o'clock. Okay, so what it's doing here is constructing. Yeah. That is shortly. Yeah. As an example to show you how, within say, you can construct mathematical yeah. objects and with no design. I have to learn how to So there's. Well, it wouldn't be my fault. You already know about the system <laughs> versus the model. So we can reduce the whole set of masters down to the energy master module. Where everything is equivalent, one of these other modes is the value set. Yeah. And then we say whatever large instrument is going to be equivalent to the modulo divided by x. So what all it's showing you here is Sage knows about it. And it has those it has those structures uh, created. And uh, so it has the uh, object, yeah, you have defined things. Yeah, yeah. You could have so, so you're yeah, yeah. So have these capital integers is a module and it can do a simple argument by an integer itself, and it just like that and it creates the system of integers. Your little bit of it is just your chosen name on it. It just gives you a short variable name. So, what you've done here is you've done zbase.list, which is the less scalable argument. Within, in general, within Sage, and this comes from a kind of programming construct called Whenever you have an existing object, 
quite often being controlled, not the short function on that object using this application with the the object dot and then the sum. You can discover what all the relevant commands are. You can put the dot and just press the tab key. So they're great to talk about it. So this is an aspect of our tab translation. But it, it, it'll only show you here commands that are relevant and callable on the HTTP model. So this is the way that you can discover, you know, the capabilities of it and the relevant commands. So one of them now is this list of addition breaks. So that's the so the exam will be in this such and such form, it'll be on paper, I'll realise the exam will be on paper, yes, it's all the time, because it wasn't going in, so I just kind of stopped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this exam is going to be on paper, yeah. Yeah. but we'll have to use the tab key to the tab key. Okay. Yeah. 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 But there'll be aspects of SAGE which may help with some of these important questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I can understand that it just takes me a little stress. <laughs> so, this is doing my pen for me, but it doesn't want to do it. What's up? I did that. Yeah, it's just a problem. No, I did that. Yeah, yeah. 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 But then it tells you you did mistake it. You're correct. It's like, so, parent just means, well, the parent, your parent is, is, is well, okay, in, in here it means. You've got an element little a, and the parent of it is the, the containing structure that contains that element. When you're writing more complex programs, sometimes you might wish to discover what the parent structure is of a particular element, which is at a certain place in the program, and then you might call uh, that parent. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. It's too much. It's just kind of trying to what A is, and it's like A comes from the origin. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's telling you something about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that addition table is a little bit obtuse because it's it's attached to it's used just the symbols A to H. And so actually you've got to use that A to H. Yeah, you know, it's not the tab completion, but you can also do the tab completion the position of the cursor just to the open bracket of the command and create a place to tab. It will pop up and help you. And that tells you, gives you the format of how to call that command. So you can call the addition page. The self has the field off. You see that the self is the first option of the function. That just means that when you call it like this after the name of another object, that object goes there in the first item. So it's like you're calling this function on the object itself. This is the way it's kind of phrased. And the reason, so the, the default behavior of the option name is what that page is, so it just associates the alphabetic letters with it. Kind of it might be more natural for us to use elements of that. Is that explained by that word? Right, we use the string representation. If it comes code, it just reads one. Yeah, okay. I only learned that from the same names. You can learn that from the same names. Names equals single quote elements. So if you misread one digit, it works out really well. Yeah. So that's going to use the string representation. Oh. What do you think the string representation is? Yeah. Code is that. So that's a much more natural thing to say. Code yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so they have to work all the way through that, but something you could put back to the back. I think I did exercise you. Yeah, yeah. Getting okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Um, so, how are we doing?
need it. So that second command, they were. Yeah, but why is zero specifically? Is it picked out the number one, or is it just basically labeled A is the zero yeah. that executed again? Oh, how do I the execute? Position the cursor back in the bar for the shift control. Oh, this one here, yeah. Shift enter. No, it is shift enter. <laughs> okay, but if you, if you want a random element, do the command discovery on Z8. On Z8. Type Z8, Z8 dot, and then do the tab. It'll show, show you all the possible commands all on Z8. Is there one for random elements? No, the other band one. Random element. Do that. And press enter. Yeah. yeah. And then type your brackets. Now put the cursor just out of the first bracket. And there. press tab again. And then it will show you the help, the oh. help information oh. for that command. And it will probably just confirm. Structure the yeah. elements is coming from. Which structure 
So x equals one. So, so the proof of order four, the e dot one there is where it has four ordered pairs. Who is it? Who is it? Where's the next use of this person? The hex and then use the proof of order. Wait, the inside of the notation for friends. You can just sign it. So you have the idea of different notation types. Yeah, which is your bunch of ways. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, in other words, cursing means forcing someone and they do something? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I was cursing. Um, right. <laughs> but in computer yeah. science, right, coercion means taking an element and forcing it to become a different stable kind. If, 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 if there's a natural way to turn that out, you think when you put it in there, and, uh, yeah. strictly to the it gives me one thing to do. So although you might like you might have a plain old great big of the good people very natural way to turn it into yeah, yeah, yeah. Much of right. Uh, and then you just the problems become yeah, so this is the element where one goes to two, two goes to that's exactly the good course and you don't have to go on into one which is not going to be like one one five or anything. Yeah, like this. And then there's lots of other ways to but to take the lots of ways to bring up the next object if you want to slide that way. And although it strictly is a value of this other time, it might be natural that we can say. Force it or coerce it into being an element of that. So you can do operations that are going to be in the related concept of the nucleation version. So you'll, yeah. you'll see the word come up from time to time. You literally remind me of a bit of human wiring there. Yeah. And then the inner of the loop would just be h.org. Yeah. 
Right, and then that would be like 12 percent or just so. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, <laughs> so, 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 When you do when you do a for the so you have to end the for statement with a colon. Cool. And then when you press enter, ah. it's gonna be dead. Yeah, yeah, for a long Yeah. Okay. And remember so Python uses indentations. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Then, yeah. Just put whatever block is indented straight out of four. That's the inner like that's the inside of the yeah, yeah. 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 Order is something you can call on any group. I probably well, yeah. So when you call a command like that, really it, it calls the command order and for the first argument it takes whatever the object the yeah. object is. So it's equivalent to saying order. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because when you code the program, the first argument itself. Uh, definition of the function, whatever you call self. Like, the order is 312. Yeah, so if you say order brackets H, then it will use the appropriate row two. So, yeah, but it's not. A, B, C. Oh, flips it like that. Yeah. So when oh, done it that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Y